Well, hello everybody. Today is Sunday, 23rd of October, 2022. Steve again, from the Insights Books. And today I'm going to read to you from Jubilee's Insights, starting at the beginning. It's a long chapter, so I'll read some of it. I won't be able to read all of it. Just give you a taste of it and please do buy my books go to Amazon and have a look at all my eight books there I do encourage everybody please do buy my books it helps me to produce more books and it came to pass in the first year of the exodus of the children of Israel coming out of Egypt in the third month on the 16th day of the month, on 2450 Anno Mundi, or years of the world, or after creation, the God spoke to Moses saying, come up to me on the mountain, and I'll give thee two tablets of stone of the law and of the commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. Comment number one, Anno Mundi, is Latin and means years of the world or years since the creation of the world. 2450 Anno Mundi is approximately 1550 BC. Exodus 19.3 And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. Verse 2. And Moses went up into the mount of God, and the glory of the Lord abode on Mount Sinai, and a cloud overshadowed it six days. Exodus 19.9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. Verse 3. And he called to Moses on the seventh day out of the midst of the cloud, and the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a flaming fire on the top of the mount. Exodus 19.16. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Well, as you can see, I'm reading to you from the Book of Jubilees. Plus, I'm giving you what it says in the Bible, one after the other. And a few comments, of course, at the present time. Jubilees is also known as Little Genesis, or a smaller account of Genesis. But I would say that it's a very important book because it has a lot of details that are not mentioned in the Bible. A lot of very interesting details. And it was given, as you can see, to Moses himself. Jubilees is known as a, one of the more religious books. But having said that, I think it has a lot of accurate accounts, of very, very interesting information I think everybody should know. In fact, if you read all the Apocrypha books and you know your Old Testament, New Testament, of course, but here we're specializing on the Old Testament here. If you know the Apocrypha books, and the King James Version of the Bible, then you're going to have a very well-rounded picture of all the events back then, what really happened. That's why I've made these Insights books, because <coughs> some, some person decided to, or some persons decided to take 15, the Apocrypha book, out of the King James Version of the Bible in 1885 with very very strange reasons and one of them was oh they can't remain in there because 
they weren't originally written in Hebrew. I don't know who made that um, decision. Only to be proven, as I said before, when the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered, some 50 years after that, they took the Apocrypha books out of the Bible, in the case of King James Version, they found that, lo and behold, <clears throat> many of those same books, they found copies of them in Hebrew. So what was the real motive for taking the Apocrypha books out of the Bible? They'd been there for hundreds of years. So it was a very odd decision. And I think the Catholics and the Orthodox Church, they still have the Apocrypha inside their Bibles, or a large part of it, so they're better off than we are with their Bibles. Anyway, I digress. We'll continue here. Verse 4. And Moses was on the mount forty days and forty nights. And God taught him the earlier and the latter history at the division of all the days of the law and their testimony. Comment number two. Taught him the earlier and the latter history. God was telling Moses about the laws that he passed down to Moses from the beginning of time to the end. What God had taught Enoch before the great flood, and Noah right after the flood, and then Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob now passed on to Moses, and then after him to Joshua, his top general. Verse 5 and 6. And he said, Incline thine heart to every word which I shall speak to thee on this mount, and write them in a book. And God's showing Moses how important books are. Get it written down. You got something to tell? Same applies to you. Write it down. That's what I would suggest. You got something? Write it down. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it. It's just as God's telling Moses here. If it's important, you better write it down for other generations. Write them in the book in order that their generations may see how I have not forsaken them. For all the evil which they have wrought in transgressing the covenant which I established between me and thee for their generations this day on Mount Sinai. And thus it will come to pass when all these things come upon them that they will recognize that I am more righteous than they in all their judgments, in all their actions, and they will recognize that I have been truly with them. Comment three. What does this mean? I've been truly with them. This should read, I have been honest and faithful with them. Verse seven. And do thou write for thyself all these words which I declare unto thee this day. For I know their rebellion and their stiff neck before I bring them into the land which I swore to their fathers, to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob, saying, Unto your seed will I give a land flowing with milk and honey. Exodus 33, 3. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. Verse 8. And they will eat and be satisfied, and they will turn to strange gods, to gods which cannot deliver them from aught of their tribulation. And this witness shall be heard for witness against them. Exodus thirty four seventeen. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. Verse 9 and 10. For they will forget all my commandments, even all they command them, and they will walk after the Gentiles, and after their uncleanness, and after their shame, and they will serve their gods. And these will prove unto them an offense, and a tribulation, an affliction, and a snare. And many will perish, and they'll be taken captive, <clears throat> and will fall into the hands of the enemy, because they've forsaken my ordinances and my commandments, and the festivals of my covenant, and my Sabbaths, 
in my holy place which I have hollowed for myself in their midst, in my tabernacle and my sanctuary which I have hollowed for myself in the midst of the land, that I should set my name upon it, and that it should dwell there. Verse 11. And they will make to themselves high places, and groves, and graven images, and they will worship each his own graven image, so as to go astray. And they will sacrifice their children to demons, and to all the works of the errors of their hearts. Comment number four. Can we imagine that man has stopped doing what it says in this verse? Verse 11. Worship each his own graven image. Sacrifice their children to demons? Question mark. There's evidence abounding in the scriptures that these things are still going on today on an even bigger scale. When it comes to God's final judgments in the book of Revelations, the very end of chapter 9, it states, Revelation 9, 20, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. Revelation 9, 21. Neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor their fornication, nor their thefts. Comment 5. Today we hear all the time of children being kidnapped, used in some sort of witchcraft, sorcery, ritual, along with sexual perversions and cursed pedophilia, as a sacrifice unto Satan, or one of his fallen angels, to get their favor or blessing. This is especially true of the so-called elite of today, and very rich trying to curry the favor of Satan and do his bidding. And this is the exact description that God gives to the merchants of the earth who enslave mankind through murder, sorcery, and theft. Revelation 18, 15. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her, to stand afar off, for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. Revelation 18, 24. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Verse 12. And I will send witnesses unto them, that I may witness against them, but they will not hear and will slay the witnesses also, and they will persecute those who seek the law, and they will abrogate and change everything, so as to work evil before mine eyes. Second Ezra 2.1 Thus says the Lord, I brought this people out of bondage, I gave them commandments through my servants the prophets, but they would not listen to them, and they made my counsels void. Psalm 78, 21, 22. Therefore the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger also came against Israel, because they believed not in God, trusted not in his salvation. Comment 6. It's an amazing statement by Almighty God himself. Here God is stating that although God himself was indeed chosen Israel as his special nation, who was supposed to be both a witness to the nations and example of God's presence among mankind, that God was prophesying that Israel would go astray and worship idols. He also stated that even though he would send prophets unto Israel, they would not listen to them, but would slay them. This is reflected in the New Testament by the Messiah Jesus himself, the Son of God, in Matthew tw chapter 23, in his exhortation to the Pharisees. Matthew 23, 31. Wherefore you be witness unto yourselves, ye are the children of them that killed the prophets. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. Matthew 23, 
35. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel and the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Matthew 23, 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stones them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Well, there's a lot more here too, a lot more cross-references and comments. I'm going to go now to verse 13. And I will hide my face from them, and I will deliver them into the hand of the Gentiles for captivity, for prey, and for a devouring. And I will remove them from the midst of the land, and I will scatter them among the Gentiles. Verse 14. And they will forget all my law, all my commandments, and all my judgments, and will go astray as to new moons and Sabbaths and festivals and jubilees and ordinances. And after this they will turn to me from amongst the Gentiles with all their heart and with all their soul, with all their strength. And I will gather them from amongst all the Gentiles and they will seek me so I shall be found of them. And they shall seek me with all their heart and with all their soul. Comment 13. This is stating that sometime after Israel has come together again as a nation, time will come when finally Israel becomes a godly nation once more. When will this happen according to scripture? According to the above verse, this will only happen when Jesus returns to the earth in his victorious second coming to both destroy the Antichrist and his world empire with his capital in Jerusalem, and to rescue the remnant of the faithful in Israel. According to Ezekiel 38 and 39, Israel will be attacked by Russia in the future, and two-thirds of the population will be decimated. Time frame is called the time of Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 37. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is in the time of Jacob's trouble. But he should be saved out of it. Jeremiah 33. And lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, saith the Lord. I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee. Yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I correct thee in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. Verse 16. And I will disclose to them abounding peace with righteousness, and I will remove them the plant of uprightness with all my heart and with all my soul. And they shall be for a blessing, not for a curse. And they shall be the head and not the tail. 17. And I will build my sanctuary in their midst, and I will dwell with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people in truth and righteousness. Verse 18, I will not forsake them nor fail them, for I am the Lord their God. Verse 19, And Moses fell on his face and prayed and said, O Lord my God, do not forsake thy people and thy inheritance, so that they should wander in the error of their hearts. Do not deliver them into the hands of their enemies, the Gentiles, lest they should rule over them, cause them to sin against thee. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be lifted up upon thy people and create in them an upright spirit. Let not the spirit of Belial, Satan, rule over them, to accuse them before thee, and to ensnare them from all the paths of righteousness, so that they may perish from before thy face. But they are thy people, and thy inheritance, which thou hast delivered with great power from the hands of the Egyptians, creating them a clean heart and a holy spirit, and let them not be ensnared in their sins from henceforth unto eternity. 22. The Lord said unto Moses, 
I know their conscience and their thoughts and their stiff neckedness and they will not be obedient until they confess their own sins and the sins of their fathers. 23. And after this they will turn to me in all uprightness and with all their heart and all their soul and I will circumcise the foreskin of their heart and the foreskin of the heart of the spirit and I will cleanse them so they shall not turn away from me from that day unto eternity. And their souls will cleave to me and all my commandments and they will fulfill my commandments. I'll be their father and they shall be my children. And they all shall be called children of the living God. And every angel and every spirit shall know, yea, they shall know that these are my children, and I am their father in uprightness and righteousness, and that I love them. Verse 26. And do thou write down for thyself all these words which I declare unto thee on this mountain, the first and the last which shall come to pass in all the divisions of the days, in the law, in the testimony, and in the weeks of the jubilees unto eternity, until I descend and dwell with them throughout eternity. And he said to the angel of the presence, Write for Moses from the beginning of creation till my sanctuary has been built among them for all eternity. And the angel will appear to the eyes of all, and all shall know that I am the God of Israel and the father of all the children of Jacob and king on Mount Zion for all eternity. And Zion, Jerusalem, shall be holy. <clears throat> Verse 29. And the angel of the presence who went before the camp of Israel took the tables of the divisions of the years from the time of the creation of the law and the testimony of the weeks of the jubilees, according to the individual years, according to all the number of the jubilees, according to individual years, from the day of the new creation, or when the heavens and the earth shall be renewed and all their creation according to the powers of the heaven and according to all the creation of the earth until the sanctuary of the Lord shall be made in Jerusalem, Mount Zion and all the luminaries shall be renewed for healing and for peace and for blessing for all the elect of Israel and that thus it may be from that day and unto all the days of the earth. So that's the end of the book of Jubilees chapter 1 which is contained within my book Jubilee's Insights I just read you the original there plus a few cross references and and a few comments but there's so much more that I put into this chapter that I encourage people please do get hold of my insights books there are, I have seven apocrypha insights books plus I have one paranormal book out of the bottomless pit and I'm currently doing a sequel out of the bottomless pit too of all the strange and supernatural things that have happened throughout time and they are related to what's gone on in the pocket books and the bible that's why you want to get that book too out of the bottomless pit as well anyway that's enough from me Steve today I hope you enjoy listening that to the first chapter from my book Jubilee's Insights Bye for now.